the med ball clean, the sandbag clean. So we always talk about moving with intention or what's your why. Uh, a lot of people just starting uh, to add in odd objects because they believe that it's more functional or use more core strength. Well, that might be the case if you're using the right muscles, but for us, we're really figuring out why are we implementing an odd object in the first place. So for us, this med ball clean or sandbag clean is to help assist in developing the mechanics of the clean. So all that means is if we're going to start throwing that ball overhead or over our shoulder, we want to use the same muscles or the movement patterns that would show up in the things that we care about like Olympic lifting, kettlebell swing, producing power on the rower, throwing, jumping. So if you look here, this is very common. And we would traditionally just pick the ball up, throw it over a shoulder, and that's the goal, right? Well, if you look, we lap it, that's similar. And the idea is, if, you, if I just thrust my hips forward and roll that ball over my shoulder, which is very common, there's really not a lot of force or momentum being generated going up, right? Which is kind of what we need to jump for that leg drive for kettlebell swings, that leg drive for Olympic lifting. All you see is I just kind of lean back and roll it over my shoulders. So there's really no carryover to this movement. Will it help strengthen my core or my legs? Maybe, but for what, right? They might be strong, but then I can't use it, so it's not functional anymore. So instead of having the ball roll over the shoulder or those general cues as like throw your hips into it, fire your hips as hard as you can, squeeze your butt, that's not how movement works. So you also see I'm off balance, probably pushing all off of the calf. That's why you can see the calf there's on a full flex. Also, this back position is not functional as well. So take a look at this side. What we're focusing on is being able to produce a lot of upward drive for again jumping kettlebell swings olympic lifting and the goal is same weight same ball what we try to focus on is how much height can you get over the shoulder we don't want that ball to just roll over you'll see that there's no carryover from hips legs core into the ball versus on this side you'll see how much power that's put into the 70 pound sandbag slam ball so the difference is how do we accomplish that what is our focus so from this loaded position this dip and drive position really right the idea is we're learning how to use our bodies the way it's designed so that's the glutes the lats the core everything's on because that's what holds our body in place that doesn't change but really to produce a lot of power for olympic lifting or jumping you really have to emphasize that knee extension. Like if you're on a rower, no one really talks about it. Everyone talks about the hips, but if you only focus on the hips, that's what you get, right? The momentum is actually going this way versus a VMO, what we call it, the inside quad. We focus on the knee drive and the momentum goes that way. So if you look at any slow-mo Olympic lifting videos, you'll see right when they get to the scoop or sec double knee bend, there's a violent knee extension. So the legs drive real hard. If you look at top level indoor rowers, right at the finish of their drive, it's a very ex explosive knee drive. So this is how we would train the slam ball or sandbag clean. Because you'll see that this is way more functional. This is how the lifts or explosive movements actually work. So imagine jumping and producing a lot of force this way. Not just thrusting my hips forward or rolling that sandbag over. Now another one of the questions were uh, what muscles are you supposed to engage? Well, to sum it up, before you begin, what we would teach is making sure the weight's being held by the lat and the core and the glute, all of those things are active because if they're not, you're probably going to use a lot more bicep and neck and trap, lower back, things like that, hip flexor. So on the next videos, I'll break down how we would prime, uh, make sure you're using the right muscles. 
and then really how it applies to comparing it to barbell lifts.